perfect. Kanahab Napi relatives, Membiwa, Tehushka, Opimiha. All right, so um, we are going to get back into the series, and this is uh, what I've decided to do with this. So the first one I did was Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. And what I'm going to do is each day is I'm going to alternate to between that one and the uh, Delaware, Maryland uh, families. So today we're going to do Delaware and Maryland, and I'm going to try to keep it at two families at a time. Then that, you know, that way it's not so uh, drawn out. Um, and I appreciate uh, everybody's feedback for letting me know um, that they appreciate uh, me doing the videos. All right, so let's jump into it. So um, this time we're going to do Virginia, Maryland, uh, free American Indians, uh, family history, and we're going to start with the Adams family. So this is Maryland. It says Mary Adams, born, say, 1660, was enlisted in the inventory of Honorable William Culvert, Esquire, of St. Mary's County on July 13th, 1682. Mary Adams married to a Negro, 13 pounds. William, a Negro, about 30 years old, 30 pounds. Adam, a Negro, about 21 years old, 30 pounds. John, a mulatto boy, two years old, eight pounds. And then it uh, gives you uh, the information where you can find this at. Then it says the uh, family was living in the household of John Manning, when they were listed in the inventory of St. Mary's County Estate in 1716. One Negro man called Adam, 14 pounds. One mulatto man called Tho Adams, 30 pounds. One mulatto man called John Adam, 30 pounds. Then it shows you uh, where you can find that information as well. All right, let's continue. And they were listed in the inventory of St. Mary's County Estate for Mr. Cornelius Manning on October 14, 1721. Then it says, uh, home plantation, a mulatto man called Jack Adams, and what is his, 35 pounds. One ditto called Jackie Boy, and what is his, 35 pounds. One old Negro man called Adam, at 14 pounds. Goes on to say, there was a, also a mulatto slave named Richard Adams, about 40 years old, on February 25th, 1722-23, when he was listed in the Charles County estate, uh, estate 
of Mr. Richard Llewellyn. It shows you uh, where you where you can find that info on him. Mary and Adam were apparently the parents of John, born 1680, two years old when he was listed in the estate of William Colbert, valued at 30 pounds. When he was listed in um, John Manning's estate in 1716, valued at 35 pounds, in the estate of Mr. Cornelius Manning on October 14, 1721. Thomas, born, say, 1683, a mulatto valued at 30 pounds in the inventory of John Manning's estate in 1716. All right. It says, a Maryland law of 1664 made slaves of white women who married slaves. But after the marriage of Eleanor Butler to William Borman's slave, Charles, excuse me, William Borman's slave, Charles, in neighboring Charles County in August 1681. The law was repealed the following month if the marriage was sanctioned by the master. Few of St. Mary, Mary's County's colonial court records have survived, so it is not possible to determine how the family became free. But Mary Adams and Adam were apparently the ancestors of the following free members of the Adams family. It says Sarah, born 1733, presented by Charles County Court in November 1753 for having a mulatto child. Jacob, head of a Washington County household of 10 other free in 1790. Anne, mulatto, head of a Charles County household of 7 other free in 1790. Anne, mulatto, head of Charles County household of six other free in 1790. James, born 1760. Joseph, head of a St. Mary's County household of eight other free in 1790. John, born, say, 1760. Hannah, born, say, 1760. John, born, say, 1761. Phoebe, head of a St. Mary's County household in three other free in 1790 and five in 1800. Jenny, head of a St. Mary's County household of three other free in 1790. Perhaps the Jenny Adams, who was head of a Charles County household of five other free in 1800. Jane, head of a Charles County household of four other free in 1800 and six in 1810. Jacob, head of a Dorchester County household of four other free, and a slave in 1800. Samuel, born, say, 1762. Adam, born about 1763. James, born about 1769. Head of a St. Mary's County household of two other free in 1790, and six in 1800. Obtained a certificate of freedom in St. Mary's County on July 15, 1812, age 43 years or thereabouts, complexion black, hair short and curly, born free. All right, then we're going to move on to Henry, head of a St. Mary's County household of four other free in 1810. Joseph, born about 1792, obtained a certificate of freedom in St. Mary's County on June 1st, 1812, age 20 years or thereabouts, complexion black, hair short and curly, born free. William, born about 1783, obtained a certificate of freedom in St. Mary's County on June 21st, 1815, age 32 years or thereabouts, dark complexion, born free. All right. Now we are going to move on to James Adams, born, say, 1760, was head of a St. Mary's County household of uh, four other free in 1790, six in 1800, and three in 1810. And James Adams was the father of Charles, <clears throat> excuse me, born about 1782, 
obtained a certificate of freedom in St. Mary's County on June 16, 1821, son of James Adams, about 29 years of a yellow complexion, born free. All right. Next, uh, we're going to talk about James Adams, born, say, 1760, was a free Negro, head of a Prince County, Prince, excuse me, Prince George County household of eight other free in 1800 and eight in 1810, called J.B. Adams. He may have been one of four black persons being soldiers of the Maryland line, V-I-Z-T, Thomas Thompson, Leonard Turner, Valentine Murin, and John Adams, who were arrested by the local authorities in Orange County, North Carolina, in December 1780 for breaking, to, for breaking into someone's house. They were forcibly rescued by the Continental Army. And it uh, gives the information about the Continental Army and the, I guess them uh, being arrested. John Adams was listed in the muster of Captain Henry Gaither's company in August and September 1778, the same company as Charles Proctor, Adam Adams, and John Butler of Charles County. And then it shows uh, where you can find that information. He may have been the father of Maria B., Born about 1788, married Nathan D. Hale or Hall. She obtained a certificate of freedom in Prince George County, Prince George's County on February 26, 1813. Maria B. Hall, formerly Maria B. Adams, is a bright mulatto woman, about 25 years old and 4 feet 10 inches tall. She was raised in the town of Piscataway, in Prince George's County until she married Nathan D. Hale, her present husband. She was born free. All right. Then next we got George Clinton, born about 1796, obtained a certificate of freedom in Prince George's County on October 15th, 1827. A dark mulatto man, about 31 years old and five feet, nine and a half inches tall born free in Prince George's County. All right, let's keep it moving. We're gonna go on to, looks like Hannah Adams. Born, say, 1760, was head of a Baltimore City household of three other free in 1800. She may have been the mother of James, married Agnes Butler, both Negroes, by bands on December 21st, 1800. Then it shows where you can find that information. John Adams, born, say, 1761, was a free mulatto, head of a uh, Charles County household of seven other free in 1800. He was a colored man who had a daughter named Elizabeth Ann Adams by Sally Gary, a white woman. According to testimony by Thomas G. Sly for, um, for Elizabeth and Certificate of Freedom in Washington, D.C. on October 23, 1827, Sly also testified that Polly Carter, late Polly Adams, and Eleanor Davis, late Eleanor Adams, were born free and were his father's servants in Charles County for many years. John was the father of Elizabeth Ann, Polly Carter, Eleanor Davis. All right, let's keep it moving. And then next, it looks like we have uh, Samuel Adams, uh, born, say, 1762, was head of a Talbot County household of five other free in 1790, and three other free in 1800. He may have been the father of Deborah, born about 1791, obtained a certificate of freedom in Talbot County on May 27, 1819. A dark mulatto woman, about 28 years of age, five feet high, born free, and raised in the county. 
and it shows where you can uh, see her information. All right, we're going to move on to Adam Adams. Born about 1763, a free black citizen of Charles County, enlisted May 1777 in Captain Henry Gaither's company of the 1st Maryland Regiment, commanded by General William Smallwood. He received his discharge in November 1783. He was head of a Charles County household of two other free in 1790 and two in 1800, and eight free colored in 1830. He made a, declara he made a declaration in the first, first uh, judicial district court in Charles County on March 28, 1818, and June 5, 1820, to obtain a pension. He was living at the time with his wife, Anne, and six children, Pamela, Eleanor, John, Robert, Richard, and Lydia. He received a pension and 50 acres of bounty land for his service. Then uh, it shows where you can uh, see the information about uh, his, uh, him getting his pension and uh, his role. Um, it says he was the father of Pamela, Eleanor, John, Robert, Richard, Lydia. Then it says um, another member of the family was John, head of a Richmond County, Virginia household of four other free in 1810. He was probably identical to John Adams of Maryland, a free Negro by trade a ditcher who sued Richard Sherdock, a free mulatto in Lancaster County, Virginia on December 20th, 1776 for assaulting him. And then if um, you guys remember, um, I do believe we had the Adams uh, line that we read in the uh, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and I think the same story came up. All right, so again, uh, this is Marilyn. This is the Adams family, and it looks like uh, most of them were in the uh, St. Mary's County area um, in the uh, 16, 1700. So if any of those names come up in your genealogy, um, definitely uh, take a look at this and uh, see if it, you know, helps you trace back and uh, get a good start. All right. So the last family that we're going to do on here, as I said, I'm going to do uh, two at a time, is going to be the Aldrich family. Uh, Jane Eldridge, born, say, 1733, a white woman, was called Jane Eldrick, and was a servant of Thomas Marsh of Christ Church Parish in November 1749, when the Queen Anne's County Court convicted her of having a mulatto child by a Negro. The court sold her son Nicholas to Eleanor Murphy until the age of 31, and called her Jane Eldridge when it sold her to Captain Thomas Marsh on March 26, 1754. Then it says she may have been the ancestor of uh, Thomas Aldridge, head of a Talbot County household of three other free in 1790 and five other free and a slave in 1800. Probably identical to Thomas Aldridge a free mulatto, head of a Bay 100 Talbot County household of one male over 50, two male 16 to 50, three under 16, and one female under 16 in 1776. Then it says, uh, Fritis Aldrich sued in Queen Anne's County Court for assault by James Roberts in March 1770 says he was head of an Elk Neck uh, Cecil County household of one other free in 1790. John Aldridge, um, head of a Talbot County household of five other free in 1790 and eight in uh, Dorchester County in 1800. 
All right, so that is the Aldridge family, um, Maryland, and it looks like the county they were in was Queen Anne's County. Um, so if uh, that surname comes up or that is your surname and your people are from Maryland, this is um, a good place to check it out. Um, so uh, next time we do this, uh, we will be on the Allen family. But again, like I said, I'm going to alternate between this and the other one. So we will be back into the uh, Virginia, um, North Carolina, South Carolina uh, family history. And um, again, this is Opie Miha. Um, as always, I appreciate everyone taking time out to uh, watch the videos. And um, again, I hope this helps in your um, genealogy searches. And uh, I love you all. Um, appreciate everything. And uh, like always, I will see you next time. Later.